The Trump campaign was pushed back big time by courts around the country. As the lawsuits filed by Trump attorneys in Pennsylvania, Michigan, Arizona, Georgia, pretty much everywhere got tossed out due to lack of evidence. And it was a comedy of errors. Some of these attorneys embarrassed themselves as they could not substantiate their accusations of fraud. If you ask me to give you a 20 second overview of how things are going on, this is how it went. Trump lawsuits were dropped in Georgia and Nevada. The case in Arizona had the attorney admit that he is not accusing of fraud. A Trump campaign lawyer filed a case titled Trump vs. USA as if Trump is fighting against the country in the wrong court. Two law firms representing the Trump campaign said they will not represent Trump anymore. The campaign has filed nearly 20 lawsuits. Most of them has been dismissed, some are still pending and they will certainly file a few more. But the net result is the number of votes that has been overturned so far is exactly equal to zero. The Ohio-based law firm Porter Wright Morris & Arthur, a firm that has represented Trump in a lawsuit in Pennsylvania, dropped Trump as the client. Lawyers working for the company started protesting the decision of the firm to represent Trump in these cases. The same thing happened in Arizona as well. On Friday, Jones Day, a law firm that has worked with Trump for a really long time, announced that Jones Day will not file any more additional lawsuits on behalf of Trump. The Lincoln Project sent out a tweet earlier this week encouraging people to contact employees of Jones Day and Porter Wright through LinkedIn and asking them how they can work for an organization that is trying to overturn the will of the American people. They even encouraged employees of the firms to resign in protest. I don't know how far the Lincoln Project's PR nightmare campaign has worked, but things have moved quite fast in the last 4-5 days. So this is what a lawyer from Porter Wright had to say. I believe the question is whether this firm should lend its prestige and credibility to the project of an administration bent on undermining our democracy and our rule of law. Parker A. Ryder Longmate, a Jones Day lawyer in Washington, and he is a former U.S. Supreme Court law clerk, wrote to his colleagues in an email. So Jones Day is, the, is one of the top 10 law firms in the country with 2,500 attorneys and has a gross revenue of more than $2 billion. It was founded in Cleveland as more than 100 years of history. So it's a big deal law firm. So don't think it's just two firms that withdrew from representing Trump in election lawsuits. This also sends a message to other law firms that these cases are so bad that you can make some money for a couple of weeks, but you will end up damaging your reputation forever. Some of the arguments these lawyers were forced to make was embarrassing to say the least. And what choice do you have when you sign up with Trump? You, you really don't have room to travel a lot of distance without evidence when you are under oath and inside the court. The case in Arizona kind of summarizes the problems these law firms are facing and why one after another want to run as far away from Trump as possible. So this was a case filed by Trump attorney Mr. Corey Langfer, claiming that some ballots that were cast for Trump got invalidated as voters used Sharpie pens because the ink bled on the ballots and the votes were rejected because of that and our client is hurt, blah, 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 blah. On Thursday, the lawyer comes into the court and when pressed by the judge, he admits, he admits what happened in Arizona was good faith errors, meaning no one did that with an intention to cause harm and he is not accusing anyone of stealing the election or committing fraud. And oops, that is exactly what his client has been tweeting and raging for more than a week now and he continues to do so. As you can see, after being forced to admit in the court that they are not accusing anyone of trying to steal the election and then admitting that these votes, even if they are invalidated, are not good enough to change the outcome of the election, what else can you do? You can only withdraw the suit. In Michigan, two Republican poll workers filed a suit to stop the certification of election in Wayne County, one of the largest counties there. If the certification in Wayne is blocked, that will stop the certification of the entire state. But the judge flatly refused due to lack of evidence. He noted it would be an unprecedented exercise of judicial activism for this court to stop the certification process. In Nevada, a GOP produced a list of allegedly illegal voters turned out to be legal voters who were soldiers, sailors and their wives who were stationed in other places. So there are two 
more important cases pending, one in Wisconsin and one in Pennsylvania. Both lawsuits want the certification to be stopped. So those cases are still pending. So we need to see how far that goes in the next week. The idea which the Trump campaign is still pursuing is to inject in some way a credibility to their accusations of fraud. Stop the elections from being certified in time. Establish an excuse for GOP legislatures to step in and appoint pro-Trump electors by pretending that there is no way to find out who the winner will be due to these lawsuits. Then the decision to appoint pro-Trump electors will be discussed in the Supreme Court. If it gets to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court will 100% ask everything to be resolved before December 14th, the day in which electors vote for the president and the vice president, because that date was the main reason behind the Supreme Court's decision to not allow further recount in Florida in the Al Gore versus Bush case in 2000. So the Supreme Court will say you have to finish everything before December 14th, and if there are pending lawsuits about election integrity in the lower courts, the GOP legislatures do have a standing to appoint pro-Trump electors. The problem then moves to the Congress and then Trump wins the vote in the House of Representatives. The plan does look very straightforward on paper, but not so straightforward in reality. It is the first hurdle that is becoming so hard for the incompetent Trump campaign to overcome. And the reason is becoming very evident. You don't have any evidence. And lawyers cannot manufacture one, not when they are in the courtrooms and not when they are under oath. They tried and they failed and they will continue to fail. This is the problem as I see it. They have filed so many lawsuits, 20 and growing, and they have not yet overturned a single vote. If they have not succeeded in a single case, how are they going to stop the certification in one state <clears throat> when they actually need at least three states to stop Biden from getting 270 electors. Not with these lawyers, not when a top 10 billion dollar firm throws in the towel and says that it will not file any more cases. This is not going to happen. And more than all of that, the support from Republican senators to continue the charade will, swing, will soon dwindle because Sheldon Adelson, Charles Coe and Rupert Murdoch, the three billionaire pillars of the Republican party, have already said that the election is over and it's time to move on. Trump has already ran out of time and he is using whatever time left to milk more money from his supporters for his own benefit. And for what it's worth, we can watch the crybaby lose twice in a span of three weeks. Thanks for watching.